this game released on my birthday. Yeah. Pizza Tower is a game made by Torta Pizza. It was in development for five years and started gaining popularity after the release of the Sage 2019 demo. You play as a fat Italian man named Peppino Spaghetti. I cannot stress this enough. This is the best video game character name I've ever heard in my life. I found this game shortly after its release of January 26th, um, as I saw my friends playing it. And I tried it out, and I was immediately hooked on the game. I beat it in about 10 hours on my first playthrough with a 69 completion rate. I'm not joking. Overall, this game is good, but I have so much more to say about the game than just game good. So, let's get into this. When I first boot up the game, it starts out simple, with just an average jump, walk, grab, and also weird on slam. But shortly after you learn the average gameplay mechanics, you get into the spicy stuff of this game. The Malk Run. This thing is insane, taking inspiration from the Nintendo series Wario Land 4, an experimental platform series. The Mock Run lets you kill enemies if you're at, at least Mach 2, also allowing you to break metal blocks and other tiles. While you're Mock Running, you are able to do a super jump that can be cancelled by grabbing and continuing your Mock Run. With all the mechanics of the game, you'd expect the story and stuff to be quite insane, but it's actually pretty simple. There's an Italian man named Peppino Spaghetti. You own a pizza place, fittingly named Peppino's Pizza. You're stressing about debt as a huge sentient pizza named Pizza Face. I cannot make this stuff up. <laughs> enters your pizza place, and he threatens to blow up your shop with a huge laser on top of his pizza tower. So you go after pizza face, and descend the pizza tower, descend into the next week, and save your pizza shop. Now to level design. This is some of the best stuff I've seen since Celeste, one of my favorite platformer games of all time. Take the first level of John Gutter for example. When you enter, there's not really much to see. If you have a keen eye, you'll notice a notch on the side of the wall. If you break it, you'll go in to find an empty room. But we will get back into this later, when we talk about the ranks. To the right, where you need to go for now, is an elevated surface with two platforms on it. You are designed to mock run through the surface, uh, bash through a few cheese slimes, and break a metal block. It's a pretty straightforward level if you dash through collecting toppings, but you need to get money to unlock boss gates. And we get to the final room, where there is a pillar named Pillar John. Run into him, ignoring the sign saying do not break, and uh, look what you did. It said do not break, and you did it anyways. Now the entire place is collapsing. Good job, Sherlock. Anyways, you should probably get out of here. That timer that's taken down does not look very friendly. As we run out of this crumbling disaster, new enemies will spawn. Most notably, the Mini Johns, which in the older versions of the game with something called the Heat Meter, were absolutely painful to deal with. Anyways, as you scale your way back to the end of the level, you should most likely get to the end. He's successfully beaten the first level of the game. Congratulations! If you go back and check out that one room during the escape, you can do possibly one of my favorite parts about this entire game. The Lap 2. Now, this might just seem like a lazy add-on to make the game more replayable, but actually, it's for something called the P-Rank, which is the hardest thing to achieve in this entire game, and uh, just, it's insane. Everything else aside, the ranking system is pretty simple, from D, C, B, A, and S, and the aforementioned P-Rank. It all just depends on score, and for the P-Rank, finding the secrets and keeping the combo through the entire level. Secrets are simple enough, just hidden areas that give extra scorn after the counter. Combo, however, is a bit of a pain to work with, as you gotta keep up for the entire level for appearing. It's... but if you go through a door, or anywhere, or through another screen, pause for a moment. It's pretty simple, unless you're trying to go for appearing. If so, just have fun suffering. On to the one other level that's actually fun on floor 1, Pizza Escape, one of my favorite levels in the game. This level introduces the player to transformations, small little power-ups you need to progress by killing stupid rats, and I'm not joking, that is their actual name. We see our first transformation in the game, the night ability. We walk slower, or if you slide off ramps and double jump, we slide to a rat and touch the Pope to remove the transformation, and this repeats for a while, click the toppings and the shaving boots done, and we escape yet again. Now you have $100, out of depth, and you have to go spend it all for progression. On to the first boss of this game, Pepperman. Pepperman is a comically sized pepper who likes painting and has an ego larger than the size of Doom Eternal. Seriously, why is this game 89 GB? He simply dashes at you at first, but after hitting him twice, he'll turn around unless you perfectly time it to where he runs into the wall and you jump out of the way. After hitting him four times, he'll try to ground slam you. If you just hit him twice, he'll start bouncing around after the ground slam. Hit him a bit more, and then he's dead. Right? Nope. Phase 2. Basically the same thing but faster. We kill off this comically sized pepper, put him on our pizza, and then we finish off this floor beating the other two levels, which don't have much going on for them. Alright, on to floor 2. Whoa, it's Texas! There's not really much going for this floor, except for the fact Fast Food Saloon is a pretty fun level, with a small mechanic of cards that if you collect them all, give you a noticeable point bonus. On to the boss, which honestly I hate with a burning passion, the Vigilante. 
she said that. Oh, and a gun too. Vigilante at the, bo at the start of the boss fight gives you a gun too, as a gentleman he is. Once you pick it up, he starts shooting at you with a few basic attacks, which get more and more difficult to avoid, up until phase 2. It's the same thing except now it's sundown, and cardboard cutout cows are now flying all over the place. Once you get him down to HP, you do a classic western draw with more room to shoot than a quick time event in modern AAA games. Hooray! We can now move on from this floor that was more mediocre than the Binding of Isaac Rebirth's second DLC. Moving on to floor 3, the floor that contains the one character in this game that people like more than Pepino. Most of these levels are actually noteworthy, except for Crust Cove, due to how little the transformation mechanic changes how the level plays. First off, there's Golf, which was an April Fool's version of the game that made it into the final game. And one of the most, you'll hate it until you realize how to do it levels, in any game ever. You just have to hit these grease balls, which are basically just living golf balls, into basketball hoops. And you do this for top ins up until the end, and get through the level. On to the next level, Deep Dish 9, a base themed level where the transformation is an olive bubble in a rocket, and the mechanic? Teleporters. Besides, and these two combined to make a level spicier than Taco Bell Diablo Sauce. It's a pretty basic level, besides that, it's pretty fun to P-ranking is overall 10 to 10 level. No nitpicks about it at all. On to the level, most people that have played Pete's Tower will be waiting for it. No enforced. Everybody wanna be a superstar, get a lot of money, drive fancy cars. Everybody wanna be a superstar, get a lot of money, might not see them more. Everybody wanna be a superstar. There is no mechanic at first glance, or transformation, but there's a reason for this. As you progress through the level, you'll eventually see a sign with the two people, a fellow chef and a rat, the people that were chasing each other on floor 1, and when you touch it, you get to play as them. There's even a tutorial mid-level for these two. I personally think that they don't feel too right in Pizza Tower, but that they deserve their own game of DLC, but except for that, this is a pretty good level. Not that good, not that bad. Now onto the boss fight. The one, the only, the famous TV star. The Noise. Yes, that is his actual name, and it is the best boss fight in the game, and you cannot change my mind. This man is the definition of pure, unfiltered chaos. He literally f throws bombs at you like every day for him is 4th of July. It's one of the best boss fights ever played in the game, and is the most replayable one as well, because those attacks were randomly picked. However, there is one thing to do that sets his boss part. And now he's dead, good job. On to the art style. I'm probably surprised it took me this long to talk about it, as the art style of this game is beautiful. It's like early 2000 cartoons got shoved into a blender of pixel art. It's one of my favorite art styles I've ever seen, and the slightly grotesque feel of it all just feels perfect for the game. There isn't much else to say besides how well it fits with it. It makes it feel like a playable cartoon, honestly. On to floor 4. Are you tired of this yet? Because I definitely am. This floor, there isn't much to talk about, and there's the Pig City, which is only significant due to you playing as Gustavo and Brick again, and also, the Bacon Room. And then there's Refrigerator, 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 I'm not going to pronounce that again, and it's due to you getting an item that if you try to bring it into other levels, like boss fights, you cannot die as. Literally, it is impossible to die with the transformation. It makes Pepino invincible. And also, for spoilers sake, I will not mention this boss fight for this floor, or the final boss. On to floor 5, which contains my favorite level of the game. And I will mention all the levels on this one due to the fact there's only three levels and also to compensate for the last floor and the two bosses. Level 1, Pizza Scare, a spookier version of Pizza Scape, where the leveling gimmick is you become John Faith from the hit game Faith and use priests to kill ghosts. Nothing else to it. Level 2, Don't Make a Sound. As much as I don't want to say this, it's a level inspired by a certain game to do with a pizza place. And no, I'm not talking about the original concept of Pizza Tower, Pizza Massacre. And then level 3, War. GOD, THIS LEVEL IS SPICY! This is the best level in the game, no doubt, and there is one reason and one reason only. Pepino gets a shotgun. I'm not joking either, Pepino becomes a killing machine in this level, shooting pizza soldiers out of the way the whole level, also dealing with clones of himself in the last half. Not to mention the fact that there's a timer taking down the whole level, which you have to bring up through timers found throughout the level. And unlike in pizza time, if you run out of time, you're dead. And that's about it. We could mention the community, for example the mods and sugar Spire, but this essay is already over 10,000 characters long, so I think it's about time I wrap this up. Thank you for listening through this extremely sleep deprived essay.